I'm making a major announcement with this video. I've been in the closet for a long time. And I'm finally coming out. Because I can't record audio in my closet anymore. Let's build a vocal booth. Don't forget to follow me on social media on Twitter at Boston Design and now on Instagram also at Boston Design. My name is Eric Strebel. I'm an industrial designer. Welcome to my channel about product design and making. I hope that you like, enjoy, and become a subscriber. Make sure you give the video a thumbs up and then you hit the bell. Hit the bell again so you get the little parentheses around it. That way you'll be notified every time I have a new video. Don't forget to check out the design and making merch just below the video on the shelf. T-shirts, hoodies, stickers, leggings, and phone cases. A very early morning trip to my local big box retailer. Renting a truck and all my materials. That's how I started out this project. You can see everything. Before I even did that, I did a sketch figuring out the basic construction. I had some general dimensions and I knew what this thing was going to look like. My big limitation for this vocal booth is my height. The ceiling in my basement is only 80 inches tall, so it's not super tall, just barely big enough for me to fit in. I'm going to rip everything down. This is the frame here. These are one buys, uh, two inches, and these are the two by fours that are going to make the floor base. And here's the quarter inch plywood that everything is going to get sheeted with. Uh, that's going to wrap the pink insulation foam on the inside. So my big thing with this booth was lightweight. And so we're gonna build these composite walls. They are gonna have two inches of styrofoam on the inside. There is a wooden frame that uh, frames these walls. Everything is modular. And then they will get skinned with quarter inch plywood. So I got the little frames built here and they'll eventually get filled in with the two inch pink insulation styrofoam. Oh, and that's how that's gonna work. Let's put the little roof on here. Yeah. Ultimately, there's going to be a light that goes in there as well. So let's uh, screw together. This is the base, uh, the part that you stand on, that everything gets built on. And I'm going to recess the floor a little bit. You can see I have uh, ripped out the little corner pieces. Let's get back to building the walls. We're going to cut the styrofoam that's going to go into the little walls we're going to do this with a utility knife here a retractable blade knife i'm cutting this all by hand to try to minimize the amount of foam uh, that gets released into the environment i could have cut it on the table saw but i want to keep that to a minimum and i'm going to cut it with a knife that works pretty good actually All right, here you can see the wooden frame fits around the pink foam pretty good. And I made those wooden strips exactly the two inches the thickness of the foam. I did end up getting one sheet that was slightly thicker than the other ones by accident. Uh, they were all 150, but one of them was a 250. I'm not exactly sure what the difference is there, but uh, one of them was just a tick thicker and I end up having to shim that a little bit later you'll see now the one wall is going to get electrical in it there's going to be a outlet box on the outside for two outlets to power the portable hard drive and my laptop the inside will get some power since there's going to be a monitor as well and the dimmer switch to control the light on the inside of this thing we need use some contact cement uh, to laminate everything together. Basically, I'm going to laminate the sheeting on the outside to the foam on the inside. The big reason here is I just want to prevent any sort of air movement, uh, any sort of potential rattling that could happen. 
and just keep all that noise to an absolute minimum. I'm using a water-based contact cement and I'm just rolling that out and then ultimately I'm going to screw all the edges together to make these composites so they the walls become very strong and relatively lightweight. I see other people on eBay make these booths out of sheetrock and my goodness I can only imagine how much that stuff weighs. I want my unit to be modular and movable uh, because who knows where I need to move it to so I want to keep it lightweight and as insulated as possible. Now I made a mistake when I ripped the exterior quarter inch sheeting down and for some reason I made it about uh, three inches too short. Not sure what happened there, but I absolutely had this uh, brain fart. So I ended up having to uh, glue that other strip on separate. Not a big deal in this composite construction. Still incredibly strong, stiff, and uh, relatively sound uh, proof. Now, this is not a sound proof booth. It is in my basement, is relatively quiet. I just need to have a wonderful dead space to record in. So we stack all the walls that I put together here on top of each other. I got some old PC cases here that are just going to provide some weight. I have little outlet boxes uh, that we're going to do all the electrical in. And of course, they are deeper than uh, a standard wall in your house. The walls in my whisper room are only two inches thick so we need to cut them down and normally I would do that on a bandsaw but my bandsaw does not have enough height I just have a small bandsaw so I have to do this by hand not a big deal and so this gives me my boxes cut them down no biggie Now for the electrical on, and everything is in one wall and the electrical is also in the ceiling for the dimmable LED. I cut a little hole or drill a little hole here in the top unit and we're gonna end up using an extension cord and we're gonna hack that up and that's gonna be our uh, plug or power for this unit. I have this old Craftsman uh, Roto Zip. And I decided to use this because it was handy. It was in the garage. I was too lazy to uh, bust out the router. I actually own two routers. And uh, so I just used this Rotozip and it worked really good. Uh, it's a little toy, basically. So we we'll drop in the boxes here. We'll drill some holes in between the two boxes, the inside one and the outside power one. And we want to make those things fit. And there's the channel where the power is going to run down. You see the hole I drilled at the top there. And we'll screw everything together. You want to do all that routing and channeling before you put your sheeting on. So you get that uh, relatively easy so you can string your power through later on. So here's the units with both sides of the sheeting. Uh, they are, of course, uh, glued together as well with the contact cement like we did on the other side. While that stuff is just sort of drying overnight and setting up, let's go back and work on the base. So we're going to drop in a half inch uh, MDF uh, floor. That's going to make it nice to stand on. It's not going to be super hard. And ultimately, in the end, it'll get some foam insulation. I glue everything together here with some Gorilla Glue. And we'll let that dry. And let's cut out the top. So this is the roof. And I'm cutting a two inch by a two inch, two foot by two foot opening in the ceiling. And it's going to ultimately get a LED that is dimmable. And so I raise the blade up into the plywood here to cut this out because I don't actually own a jigsaw. So uh, not the uh, not the way you're supposed to use a table saw, but uh, certainly works. Just be really careful when you're doing something like this. You raise the blade up into your wood, 
move the uh, saw in the wrong direction. Just be careful when you're doing that. All right, so let's cut out this hole, get a little hacksaw blade here, and uh, the opening's gonna drop out. Try not to hit the dog when it falls on the floor. Yep, watch out. Okay, so that's our hole. This is our frame, and this is the top sitting on the base, actually right here. Use some Gorilla Glue. We want to seal everything up as much as we can, make it as airtight as possible. That also helps keep the sound from coming in the booth from the outside. Do the best I can to seal everything up as I'm going along. So this is the opening. <clears throat> You're looking at it uh, upside down. We'll see it uh, put together here in a little bit. I go through, screw everything together. So let's do a little test fit of what we have. There you can see the base made out of the two by fours with the one inch floor that's recessed. And then my uh, two inch styrofoam walls. And you can see the electrical in the one on the left. That's actually the wall that you will face when uh, you do the recording put the roof on that is the hole where the lights gonna go and you can get a little fly around here and see what the booth kind of is gonna look like ultimately there's gonna be a door where I walked in and out of and we'll build that at some point in the build as well I make a little miscalculation on my electrical I can't go quite to the corner because uh, the other wall gets attached there so I need to come back with my roto zip and route out another opening here and this is where i'm going to move the light switch to with the dimmer and we'll drop in a box here as well and these are all um, little screw-in boxes you can buy these at your big box retailer this is for existing construction uh, so you can put in uh, boxes uh, before or after you have your sheeting done I drop in a little Gorilla Glue here as well for the um, light. And yes, I am just permanently gluing in the LED into the ceiling of this thing. I want to keep everything within my two inches if at all possible. If I ever have to replace that, I'll have to take the whole thing apart. I'm going to drop in some styrofoam here as well. And we'll make the cutout for the electrical box. Now... The two foot by two foot uh, LED panel has some thickness. And here I basically route out all of this foam. I hate doing this stuff. I don't like foam. It gets everywhere. It's not good for the environment. Um, but it's something that uh, I did here to make room for the LED. You'll see how it all comes together. Huge mess. Don't like it. Um but did it anyway here again using that roto zip back and forth to route out that's about a half inch something like that um, of space so that the styrofoam can go in and cover up that led and have some good insulation up there hopefully things don't get too hot yeah those uh flat panel LEDs they don't run very hot they stay pretty cool so hopefully that's going to be good over the long term I'm not going to have any issues there with that again contact cement on both sides of the styrofoam and on the plywood just to put everything together so it stays nice composite structure and here you can see why I had to route out the uh, foam for the LED light panel this is the groove at the top of the wall where the power is going to come out. You can see the uh, extension cord here that we cut up and we just snake through the opening that we left earlier. So some pre-planning is required. It's my electrical outlets. And here everything is kind of roughed in with the power. Switch on and off, dims that LED and ultimately that's going to go overhead so you can adjust the lighting. Let's put everything back together. This is a little opening so we can snake the power out of the LED in the roof. And that uh, you can see that extension cord there. So everything is going to get plugged in. You'll plug this whole uh, whisper room in to have power on that wall. 
and then we'll use the rest of the um, extension cord to come up and plug that into the uh, ceiling unit and that will just lay on the very top now we do need to allow cables to come from the outside to the inside for the computer and the hard drive that's as far as I got this is what we're gonna cover in the next video and ultimately we'll build the door it gets covered with some fabric on the outside and then the acoustic foam on the inside to give you a nice dead space this is a massive build so look for part two coming up very soon of this build don't forget to subscribe to the channel you can do that by clicking on the icon in the bottom right of the video or below the video give it a thumbs up and follow the channel there as well hey and don't forget to follow me on social media i'm on facebook sometimes twitter usually and now instagram rock on click here to check out some of the other design and making videos that i have that you might enjoy